Hunter. How are you? How are you, Hunter? Oh, I'm not forgetting about you. Hi, Logan. How are you, Logan? What are you doing? Are you being silly? Are you being silly? So here I have, uh, oh gosh, it's kind of going brownish now, but uh, part of a banana, just, you know, cut in half and then chopped carrot. So I'm trying to figure out um, what foods they like, dislike. So I'm kind of like testing it a little bit. I know Hunter has never been a fan of uh, eating banana. I don't know why, he just he's not a big fan of banana, but Logan, on the other hand, does like banana. And he did have a little bit of it. So you can see, he kind of bit the other one. He ate quite a bit of it. Um, he is a chest, what is it called, a chestnut fronted mini macaw. So he's going to grow a few inches more. He's a little shy. Camera shy. Look at him. What? I'm just looking at you. Where are you going, silly? He is quite a character. He will investigate. He will go everywhere and try to figure out what things are. Um, he's very, very, very um, alert, I would say. He's super smart. Right when I... I first brought him home I noticed how smart the macaw is uh, not not that uh, red crowned uh, Mexican Amazon aren't but yeah so this is a red crowned Mexican Amazon he is very smart he's my baby so I've had him and his name is Hunter I've had him since he was about a week old so he had no feathers uh, his eyes were shut so I'm like the first thing he saw so basically he thinks I'm his mommy Right? I'm your mommy. Yeah. He's like, what is that? What are you doing? And so um, he loves, he see the, the difference that I've noticed here with both of them is that, um, I'm going to move my chopper, have my little chopper here, um, is that Logan over there, you can see Logan, there's Logan. I'm baking some sausage over there in the oven. Logan, come here. Um, the difference is that Logan is, he's only eight months old and he's starting to eat uh, a variety of foods. I'm trying to introduce him to many different things. Um, so he's, he's still learning, but Hunter on the other hand, let's get started with Hunter. Um, he actually loves noodles, he loves macaroni and cheese. He's tasted eggs, so he likes scrambled eggs. I know it's weird, but it's in their diet of uh, okay foods for them to eat. Um, what else? Hunter loves uh, his favorite snack, I would say. And this is just like not like I'm going to feed him a whole bag, but like a one or two hot Cheetos. I'm not even kidding you. This boy over here, he just loves it. Um, as far as, oh, he's getting close to you. <laughs> come here come here so as far as hunter um he loves table food a lot of uh, a lot of the foods he loves is like human foods but then he kind of like got used to you know since he was a lot smaller to eat this kind of food um because i introduced them to him now him uh logan was not introduced to all variety of sorts of foods right away he was uh, on a pellet diet and maybe some seeds here and there um, so he kind of got used to that so I don't know um, that they fed him anything else I know he was on formula um, so he, he is uh, hand fed uh, hand raised um, so he's very very friendly towards humans he does tend to nibble here and there but that's just a macaw thing I guess um, still learning about him. I don't know where he's going. He's, he wonders a lot. He's got quite a personality for that. Um, but yeah, for him, I introduced him to a variety of foods right away. Uh, as soon as he was able to eat, I actually, it, I struggled a little bit trying to teach him how to eat peanuts and nuts and seeds and everything. 
he did take a while because he was so used to me feeding him his formula. Um, as you can see, he's pretty chunky. He he does quite eat a lot. <laughs> he loves his vegetables. He loves fruits. Um, apples are like his best thing to eat. Um, they don't fight when they're together, but Hunter's still a little bit afraid. I don't know. Hunter is not a baby anymore. He's already two years old. Technically, he's still a baby, I guess. But, um, oh, beautiful. I love when he does that. I have to teach them how to do that, like, you know, uh, as a command, like, to, you know, when you say proud of bird or something, and then they'll just do it. Um, anyway, um, so Hunter, even though he's two years old, he is a little bit afraid of this one. This one's just so curious. I don't think that he, he means harm. I don't think he means to fight with him. But, you know, um, I've heard that you can't have two birds at the same time, like, holding them near each other because... Uh, they'll become a little jealous, maybe. And the least thing you want is any any type of fights to pull off between them. So I kind of like, you know, I said Hunter. Um, let me just turn this on again. See, I'm, I'm cooking some sausages. I know this is kind of odd to show you. This is what they look like, and this is what they're looking like. And, yeah, so anyway, um, back to this. So... I am trying to kind of implement what Hunter eats into Logan's diet because Logan is not so used to this yet. Um, I know many people out there always question, you know, what's the right bird for you? And honestly, I've seen videos where people show and they say, oh, God, he's starting to show on that. You can't eat that. No. What are you trying to do? You can't eat that. You can't eat it. Um, a lot of people try to um, say that, oh, we shouldn't get a macaw, but then yet they're doing a video on a macaw. Um, don't get a Mexican Amazon, but then they're doing a video on the Mexican Amazon. And it's like confusing. It's a love and hate type of thing that I've seen on, on the videos. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of the times they say, you know, don't get this type of bird, think about it, and it's not because they're a bad bird. Because, you know, the birds, honestly, from what I've noticed with Hunter, raising him as a baby, um, what I've noticed with him is that you make them your way. I'm not even kidding you. They're like puppies. Um, they adapt to you. They, you know, they become the way you treat them. If you are rough with them, you have them locked up and... You know all that type of stuff um, don't play with them don't give them any interaction then they will become aggressive they can become aggressive and um, besides aggressiveness uh, they get they get if they're locked up for so long you know they're stressed and they need something to like example right here you see Logan towing on everything um, that's just the thing. Uh, macaws have to have something in their mouth all the time. They have to be playing with something. And you see they're both on the counter. They're both on the same counter. It's not like they're, you know, separated. You know, but they're... They... they I, I introduced them the very first day I brought uh, Logan home. I introduced them and, you know, they walked around the house. And um, I think this is actually, like, one of the... Maybe three times now that I've put them on the counter together and they're doing just fine, you know. Um, they'll avoid each other uh, and that's it. If you have noticed, they have not been attacking each other or anything like that, um, by all means. Hunter's just trying to get my attention. He's like, Mommy, I want you. That's all he's trying to do. Um, if I had noticed that maybe while I'm having them up here together, that there's something going on like this, say, because he's much bigger, you know, he's a baby. But if I had noticed, oh my gosh, they're trying to attack each other, poke each other, okay, yeah, I wouldn't have him up here, you know. Here you go. Get some banana. Open it up. Um, I wouldn't have him here. Now, if you notice, I put something right in between them right now, just because I want to avoid. I want to uh, avoid any type of contact just in the meantime. Um, it's not like they're going to be like, oh, let's go play, you know. But they get distracted so easily. So by me putting this in the center just like that, 
it took his he, he got distracted right away he's just like okay i'm gonna go walk, walk away a different way hunter he's like whatever i'm just sitting here looking at you mom and i i don't know why are you not picking me up he's like looking at me like mom pick me up please oh hunter oh you're so cutie mm. he's my baby um, now i apologize to you guys uh, my camera kind of shut off right now um going back to you know like them having them in the same center area you don't have to panic and be like oh um they're gonna fight or anything because if they haven't already they're not going to that's what i've noticed and i have tried to research on videos and stuff and have just not seen anything um about it or on it so i'm just like you know why not do this because I mean, I've seen a couple of channels. I'm not going to lie to you. I've seen a couple of channels of parrots, Amazons, you know, any type of different birds. But I have not seen any, like, thorough videos of, like, people actually explaining things. And they just show, like, a two-minute video on their bird and that's it, you know. And it's, it's, that's it. There's nothing else to it. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is because I want to inform people. Like, I want to let you know that how it really is living with amazons and it's not so bad unless you're not a pet lover if you don't like animals don't get a bird don't get a dog don't get anything i actually do have dogs um there's a teacup chihuahua um camilla and then there's a yorkie way over there uh, she's a, actually a morky she's over there drinking some water um All I could say is about the people who say not to get them a car, that's not a pet for you, that is not this, that is not that, it's not true. Don't believe what people say. People say just because they want to kind of scare you off. Now, the only reason I would think that they could tell you that is just be careful when you have a macaw. Train it. Have time with it. You know, take your time to, to be with it. That's another reason of why I can think of as to why they would say, hey, um, don't get one if you're not going to give it time. Put it that way, more like, you know, if you don't have time for a, a pet bird, don't get one. That's one thing I would actually advise. If you don't have the time to spend with it, to train it, to give it love, to feed it breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and play and bring them you know buy them toys uh clean up uh their cage after them um you don't then you don't need a, uh, a bird you don't need one and you should just not get one but you know when i got hunter i actually had gotten hunter uh along with his sister so he had his his sister and him and, and there was a they were both a week old but you know girl uh they got bigger maybe like um almost a year so they were like a few months old when um when his sister scarlet passed away during i think i was out i was out and about and i had left the cage door open one of the sides because this cage has tons of doors, and I will do a, a video later on. I have to do a lot of cleaning and a lot of setting up. I'm, on, I'm ordering a lot of stuff for the cage that I need to replace, uh, toys and such. Um, but anyhow, um, so one of the side of the doors where I had put, I think I had put water in it. I kind of left it open, so she got out. She was climbing on the cage. Um, she had no nothing ruptured, nothing was wrong with her. She just had a heart attack her heart stopped she got so spooked by my dogs that she had a heart attack and she just died just like that it i was so devastated because i took i took care of her you know from a, a baby and it's like you know all the work you put into it not even the work it's just all the love and you just treat them like they're babies and you just love them and so hunter ever since then you know he's been so lonely and I like, you know, I bring him out a lot, but like, he spends hours with me. I mean, I could be laying in bed and he's just snuggling and he's playing. He's just so much fun to have. Um, and he's like, 
I've trained him so good. I mean, I can't even say that I've like trained him. I just give him so much love that he's literally, come here, that he's literally just adapted so much to me that he's just, he, I'm not, if I have my hand out here like this, I'm not afraid of him biting me. I mean, he'll play with my ring, my hand ring or anything. He gives kisses. You know, I'm not afraid of him like literally biting um, because... I've given, I've given him so much of that love, so much trust. And, you know, he, he can sense that I truly love him and that I am not fearing him. Um, as far as Logan, um, when I first went to see him, um, this was like three weeks ago, cause he's fairly new to the family. Um, when I first went to go see him, um, I'm not going to give out information as to who I got him from just to keep it private because it's someone uh, someone close to me. So I don't want to give out their information. Oh, let me grab. Look at this. He's just destroying the plate. Um, but I will say when I first went to, to see him, I was skeptical because I was like, what if he doesn't like me? And I went with my son and I'm like, what if he doesn't like us? And as soon as we got there... It was just right away. Oh, see, he doesn't. He does, he's so smart. He does not want to come because he knows. He thinks, oh, she's gonna go put me away or she's gonna put me down. I don't want to be down. See, look how close they are together. But I interfere by putting this in the center. It takes from their attention. See. Um, but yeah, and I thought, oh my god, he's not gonna like me. What if this and that? Because I didn't know. Um, I re I try to research a little bit on macaws and I read their about their behaviors and all those things, but you know you can never it, it even all of that information is just a lot of it is just all about witnessing it yourself and you having the actual bird with you and knowing their behavior and because it's it's a personality I think it's based on personality more than what an actual macaw is and so. Yeah, I got there and I was actually even wearing a mask. I was wearing a face mask. So I was like, okay, what if he doesn't like, you know, what if that's what he knows and what if he's scared? But then, you know, the person there was also wearing a mask. Um, so it's like, oh, never mind, you know. Um, so he immediately came to me. Like I, I, I just put my fingers out and he immediately got on my fingers he stood there, and then I put him back on the on the kitchen island because they have a kitchen island there, um, and you know I put him back down. He kept walking towards me. He kept walking towards me like three to four times. He did that, and you know I was just talking to him like baby talking. I was like, oh my little baby, oh you're so precious. Look at you. You know I was just talking to him, just normal. But he could sense the vibe. He just knew that um, that I was a good person, and he felt. The honesty and he felt the love so right away of course he he, he decided come here step up oh now you want to come look at how beautiful and he just right away uh vibed i don't know he's dirty right there don't mind that it's actually from food so i gotta clean that up with a wipe um but yeah he right away just vibed and he immediately fell in love and we fell in love with him we we're like okay let's do it you know because I, I was given him as a gift I can say that um and I wasn't gonna be like oh well I'm gonna take him and we'll see what happens no I was like let me go over let me go see him let me treat him let me let me see how it is because I've never had him a call and I don't know much about them and whatever I learned is what I read and there's little videos little to no information on YouTube for these type of birds so I was like um you know what do I do uh should I or should I not and it's like you know the person who gifted me the bird was like you know what I because she, she breeds them you know she has she has um about four of them they're actually just her own that she has them at home and you know they happen to have babies and she actually breeds um, these. She breeds the uh, red crown Mexican Amazons. Those are the ones she actually breeds. But these, her her macaws ha happen to have babies, 
And this again is a chess, chestnut fronted mini macaw. Um, and it happened to have babies and she was like, you know what, do you want one? Because I, she can't keep so many. So she, if she gave the, there was a, uh, I believe three or four babies. So she gave them the other ones to her family members. Um, and then she just, she just like, she decided to just like be like, oh, let me ask Jen, maybe she wants one. So she asked me and I was like, you know what, let me go see. I didn't give her a yes right away because I was just like, I got to see first, you know? And yeah, it's been uh, about three weeks now. And I got to say, it's not about the, the type of, of uh, breed. It's about the personality, how you treat it, how you talk to it, how much time you spend with it. Because I've heard um, they call, uh, this is a chestnut fronted mini macaw because of the chestnut color on the forehead. Um, but they also call it a severe macaw. And they call it a severe macaw because supposedly they are, are aggressive and they attack out of nowhere and stuff like that. But it's like, I don't think so. I think it's just the way you treat it, how much attention you give it. Because if you don't give it attention, it's just not going to work out. They can get stressed out. It's just like when they're in the jungle and the, you know, freedom. Let me go check on the food while I speak to you guys. Uh, when they're in the freedom of, you know, their jungle and out there, they're busy all day, including Amazon, uh, the red crown over there. You know, they're busy out and about looking for food all day. So they spend hours a day looking for food. So they're busy and they that's their stimulation, right? Well, the difference is that here they have food served to them. I'm serving everything for him. He doesn't have to go out and look for his food. You know, he doesn't have to look for it or anything. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going away. Um, he doesn't have to go look for the food. So, um, so he's bored, you know, like, oh, my, my master or my, you know, my owners give me all the food. I'm bored. So they have nothing to do. So you got to buy toys for them. You got to. Give them stimulation and you want to make sure that from what this is from what i've learned is that you want to make sure that you buy them toys that you spend time with them but also implement toys to them because um if you don't implement toys for their distraction and their stimulation they become dependent on you on the owner so they want you as their entertainment and then when you don't have time, let's say you have to go to the store um, and you can't take it because it's a grocery store or you have to be out a couple hours. You have to be out for a night, something, you know, um, he, he literally waits for me to take him out of the plate. That's funny. Um, you want them to have some sort of distraction and not feel like, oh, you know, where's my owner? And then that's when they start plucking. And you don't want your bird to pluck. You really don't want your parrot to pluck. And because that's that's just stressful. Um, they can fall into depression because of the lack of uh, connection to their owner. And you really don't want that. You know, come here. You don't want to? <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's my advice to you guys. You know, it's just... I'm going to be doing more and more videos on them because I really believe that more information has to be out there. More real realistic information has to be out there. Um, yes, you can get online. You can go and get um, the do's and don'ts of like foods, you know, what's good for them, what could harm them and such. But as far as like um, treatments and stuff and, and ha um, how to have a, a a bird and and to have it not to have it i think all of that is just literally for me is bogus um let me go out here i'm gonna grab their uh a perch okay so this is polenka hi polenka hi and that's camilla hi camilla um so uh let me this is a uh, one of the cages I, I, as you can see, I have, uh, I have lovebirds in there. They're nesting, but, um, we'll do a video on that later. I'm just going to bring my perch inside because, um, I 
feel like if I don't bring the perch, they will be very annoyed and bored. And you can see they're both standing right next to each other. And I left. I literally left into the clubhouse to go get this. And they're both sitting there quite comfortably. So come here. Do you want to go? You don't want to go? Do you want to go? Come. Oh, you do. Okay. So he wants to come. So I'll place him on the perch. I need to buy a, a bigger perch, one of those perch, or maybe make one at home, but they're kind of quite difficult to make, uh, but they're like huge. And I'm gonna insert a, uh, a picture here so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. And so I kind of want to get a perch that big just so that they can both be on it and always feel comfortable with each other. I don't want to separate them and then, and then have them be, um, not quite used to being around each other and then once you put them together one good day they're gonna be all like aggressive for something you know what i mean i don't want that so um yeah so people standardize these birds just by the information they read online and i believe that you shouldn't you shouldn't standardize or you know stereotype it just because of this type that of breed that it is and I think you should take your own personal opinion about the bird because um, they have personalities. And uh, like Logan himself, Logan is so smart. As soon as I brought him home, I knew how smart he was. He's just, you can tell, he's so observant. He observes everything. He's so alert. And um, I think like the first time I introduced him to his cage, because I got him a, a brand new cage for himself, um, I introduced him. <laughs> you can't go to the camera. You're going to eat the camera? Are you going to eat the camera? Look how he pops up. So cute. Um, when I first introduced him, he was just like, oh, wow. He was looking at it up and down. And then I was like, okay, should I let him walk in it or should I just put him in it? And so I kind of like introduced him like little by little that way, uh, you know, kind of like luring him in there. And right away, you know, he got in there, he was looking, he was just everything. He was just so observant. And then, you know, he wanted to come out, so I brought him out. And then I was like, you know what, I gotta do something. But I didn't want to just put him anywhere. So I was like, let me put him back in the cage. And when I was trying to do that, he held, he pushed away from the door with his beak. He's so strong. I did not know how strong he was. He's very strong when he wants to do something. And I was just like, wow, for a, a bird his size, it's like, that's a lot of strength. And I know that he's going to grow at least a couple more, maybe two to three inches. He's going to get much bigger than that. Um, he's a mini macaw again. Sorry, the camera was tilted down. Um, he's a mini macaw, so he's not going to be as, as big as the other macaws. Um, you, can set, you can tell the shape of his head is a lot different. It, it is squared, just like the macaw originally is. But... The uh, average macaw is a lot bigger, and the average macaw has bigger, squared, more tougher, more intimidating looking uh, head. And you can tell by his body that he is a very little macaw. He's a mini macaw. He's a, he's a mini macaw, huh, babies? Oh, look at you. Oh, he look at that. And uh, the very first time I actually, I'm, I'm very impressed because I know that, I know one thing about birds is if they don't let you pet them right away on their, or you know, scratch them on their head, um, you have not connected or bonded right away. And it's, it's gonna, you're in it for a long, a long run and you're gonna, it's gonna take you a long time to uh, bond with them. But when your bird allows you to do that, you're in. That's it. You bond it and that's it, you know. Um, they, they allow you to pet them, to, you know, um, just be around them. And that's good. That's very good when they allow you to pet them on their head. Because if you, if your bird allows you to scratch their head, you're, you're golden. That's, that's it. Um, when they don't, that's a sign of, like, it could possibly sign of, a sign of aggression, a sign of, a. Um, fear they could be scared um, and you know it could be different different things of, of why they're so um, the way they are 
Um, but yeah, you guys, I want you guys to stay tuned because I will be doing a lot more on them. And I think I'm going to try to do an individual video on them because um, it's quite a lot of information to try to give to you, you know, uh, from each bird because they're both different type of uh, different breed. There's like something right here, like a bug. All right, smashed it. Um, there's, they're both different type of breed and Hunter's over here trying to eat the camera here. You can't eat the camera. You can't eat the camera. What are you trying to do? So we have these <laughs> windows up here. So he's trying to see, he's like, what's going on? Why is there so much light? Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to do individual videos and then maybe try to do tricks with both of them. I'm still working on training both of them. So, um, it's, it is going to take a little bit, but, um, I think it's, it's, it's a set goal because they get along. Um, like I said, I put them on the ground and they've walked around the house by themselves and, you know, uh, hunters to get a little jumpy here and they feel just like jump off the, um, the side of the, cause over here at the entrance, we have like a little step right there. He'll jump and stuff. And, um, one thing I've noticed is I have this little toy right here on the perch. It's a little rope for them to just chew on and play. Hunter knows already. He, he knows, he, he knows his rope. So he just, you know, bites on it. But Logan, when I first put him on this perch, and Logan was like, what is this? He was so, so scared. He went way to the side on top of the, the container, the cup. Now in the container, I have uh, water in here. And I have uh, some mixed uh, fruits and seeds. And um, yeah, so he was just terrified. Um, he was like, what is that thing? You know, because from the side, if you look at it, it looks like, like a scarecrow kind of thing. It's kind of weird, like it's got little arms. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do videos, you guys. And you know what I'm gonna attempt to do because I, I, I saw somebody do it already and attempt to do their makeup while holding one of the parrots or hold, putting them on, um, they put it on their shoulder. I want to try to do that. I don't know if I can because I know it's difficult already. Like it takes me a long time to do my makeup and it's not difficult. It's just, you know, I might, I might have said it wrong, but it, it might be difficult with a parrot next to you because my birds grab everything. And then while I'm using my, my brushes, they might just try to pull on everything. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. You guys, it's just, I'm so excited to give you all this information and and excited to have these videos, you know, for you because I am, like I said, I've seen places where, you know, videos on YouTube, I've researched, I'm not even kidding you, just last night, I sat there. Uh, so, you know, the other, the videos that I've seen are not many and the video I've seen is like Marlene McCohen. Uh, I've seen her um, interact with her birds and she has like about 10 plus birds, I'm not even kidding you. She has so many varieties and she does not have a mini macaw, but she does have a macaw. It's a lot larger than mine. And then she does have a red crown Mexican parrot that she um, rescued. And a lot, all her birds are rescued. Oh, he's trying to reach that, um, what's it called? I forgot, you guys, it's a star, a anise, star anise or something. So he's trying to grab it. Do you want any help? There you go. So if you look at him, he just hung down just to grab that. Um, so yeah, she has uh, videos just on her birds specifically and how they interact and the things that she does, her tips. And she opened up her own um, food brand and um, it's like a box with toys and food that you get for your bird each month. So it's pretty cool. You know, I've learned a lot um, from her. And it's because of her that I decided to get it, uh, uh, an Amazon in general, you know, she, she convinced me to do that. So, um, yeah. And all I can say is that, you know, I'm thankful for that, but you know, I just want to bring, I want to bring more to you guys. I want to bring content to you guys on these Amazons because they're beautiful. And if you haven't seen, um, an Amazon up close, you are missing out. You should, uh. They're beautiful. Like, have you seen them on TV? You've seen them on, you know, mainly this kind. Uh, the red crown, you've seen them, like, fly in flocks over your house. 
or I think they fly around 4 or 5 p.m. on daily. Um, and you've seen these flocks of birds and, you know, you're just like, oh, my God, they're so beautiful and they're so loud. And, you know, that just did it for me. And I am, I'm glad I did it, you know. But, you guys, I don't want to keep you any longer. I've given you as much as I could right now just because I, want, I wanted to do this short clip. Um, right now, I'm just getting their breakfast ready. Um, and it's about 8.30 a.m. And I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to implement a uh, different variety of things. So right now, well, I've kind of destroyed the plate. I have banana. Banana, they're just biting off of it, eating from it. But I have carrots, and I need to get more vegetables and implement them in there. Um, I think that I'm going to do uh, is the carrot is already small. If you can see, I chopped it up with this chopper. But what I want to do is I want to chop up a bunch of, of vegetables and then kind of like um, cook them like kind of like boil it a little bit just to soften it up and um i will try to do recipes in the future but as of now i'm just gonna you know it's a short brief um video and yeah basically that's it you guys and hope you guys enjoy this as much as i do um hunter over there eating he's munching on stuff um I hope you guys stay tuned because I'm going to bring you guys a lot more on, the, on this adventure with my Amazons and what it is to live with them uh, on the daily, what it is to deal with them and um, teach them. And so that you guys have a different story and perspective of what it is to actually have one because I'll, I see a lot of uh, videos or tips that they say, oh, don't have one because they're aggressive or don't have one because of this it's also it's all personality it's all how you treat it it's that's all it is um you can make it to you as you want it's just the example it's just like a pit bull people say pit bulls are aggressive but they don't have to be aggressive if you give them the attention they want the attention they need and you treat them playfully and um, you treat them good, then they become sweet. But if you have these dogs and think of these dogs are for fighting, you know, for dog fights, and you mistreat them, then of course, and, and a lot of people don't see this, but a lot of these dogs that have attacked people, these dogs have been chained up to the backyard forever. And that's the way they live, chained up because of their pit bull. The people assume you need to be aggressive, aggressive with them, like in the manner of like, you got to tie them up and keep them tied and you don't have to. I owned a pit bull years ago, um, way years ago. Actually, my older sibling bought it and he was a pup. she was a puppy. And I literally took care of her as a baby, like a baby. And she slept with me all the way till she was like almost one. Unfortunately, um, someone left the house gate open. She ran out, got hit by a car. But she was the sweetest thing ever. The sweetest. Um, she was adorable she was like my baby um but yeah off the topic you guys but you know it's just it is the animal is what you make it be is what i'm trying to portray out here so yeah you guys stay tuned thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more uh to come along with my birds and thank you so much for watching bye